Coming up on Inspire, happy holidays. On today's show, we've got all five of our Inspire hosts together to talk about our own holiday traditions. And we'll talk to therapist Valerie Peckham about managing expectations over the holidays. Inspire is sponsored by Kansas Furniture Mart, using furniture to inspire conversation. And by the Blanche Bryden Foundation. Hello and welcome to Inspire and happy holidays to you and to our wonderful co-hosts here. We have Danielle Norwood, we have Leslie Florange, Amy, you know you love Amy Kelly, and of course, Amber Dickinson. So tonight we're going to reminisce a little, talk about what holidays we celebrate and our own family traditions. Later, we'll visit with psychotherapist Valerie Pickham about managing our expectations over the holidays. Also, we're going to help you with your holiday baking and decorating. But first, we're going to talk about our own holiday traditions. Who wants to go first? I'm going first. <laughs> <laughs> so my favorite thing, and, and this is probably why I'm such a last minute person. Christmas Eve was about cleaning the house. My mother was hanging the drapes. We were making room in the living room for the Christmas tree. And then my father would finally get the signal from my mother that it was okay to go get the Christmas tree. And of course, it's Christmas Eve now. No, it never dawned on me until now. The reason why we went Christmas Eve is because the, cheese, the trees were cheaper then. Yes. Oh. But, but, but it was a tradition, right? So I'm gonna keep it with that. And my dad would let me uh, sit into the shopping cart and we would roll down the street down to the spot where the guy was selling Christmas trees. I'd get out of the car, me, my sister, and if my brother was alive at that point because he was younger, uh, we would go and we would look at all the trees. Of course, now there's about 10 trees left. <laughs> Charlie Brown trees. <laughs> we would pick out a tree. My father would negotiate. That was the other tradition, oh, wow. negotiate. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and uh, then, you know, the tree would go in the shopping cart. We'd get back home. My mother had the, the drapes already set. She had the mugs out with the cocoa. And then we would decorate the tree, go to bed. And the next morning, voila. Santa, Santa had been had there. Been there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Where did you grow up? In Queens, New York. Oh, wow. That's yeah, wonderful. Yeah, in the city. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me uh, go off of your story because my dad, we all actually made up a song. Uh, there was a Statler Brothers song that we kind of went after, and it was Christmas to Me. Is it, I'm not going to sing it because you guys, you don't want that. Uh, <laughs> you know, we, we would uh, see Christmas to Me is a $35 tree. They burned my gas. I froze my that's what Christmas wow. needs to be. Now, my dad was pretty funny. I mean, you know, he was so. But when we'd find the tree, we'd go out to the tree farm and we would all circle. We'd look and look and look. And when we found the tree, the tree, we would circle around it and do like from, you know, Wahoo Christmas, oh. Wahoo Christmas. And then we sawed it down and uh -huh. took it home and it, oh gosh, it smells so good. Yeah. But then we'd sing that song on the way home, so, you know. <laughs> very fun. Yeah, <laughs> <love> <laughs> Amy? Oh, I'm very fortunate because I had, as a kid growing up, the best Christmases. Um, and there's me and my two older brothers and a younger sister, and we would go down to uh, Wichita, uh, to my grandma's house, and so we would go there and we would be all dressed up. There'd be food all over the table and we would just eat and have fun, and then it would get dark, and that was the sign that we would go out and we would walk two blocks down to Grace Presbyterian Church where they had the Luminaria out. Oh, yeah, and we yeah. would look at the, at the Luminaria. And that, we knew that, 
because that meant Santa was coming. Oh. Because Santa knew to Grandma's house when we were right. down walking the church. <laughs> we get back to Grandma's house, and the front room is where the adults had their Christmas. Right. But the back room in the family room that they added on, it's like 1940 house, was where the kids was. And we'd walk it, and it would just be filled with presents. Oh, wow. I mean, it was like, score! And we'd <laughs> jump in and paper flood. It was fantastic. Then that we'd be done. The adults would then go do their Christmas in the front room. Mm, right. And when that settled down, and it was all kind of quiet, we would put on big band music, and we would all dance. Oh, oh I would have loved that. My dad loved big band music. Yeah, it was, Me too. It was, awesome. it was the best. Yeah. It was the best. I was, I'm <laughs> so fortunate. Of course, we don't do any of those things now. <laughs> not, not a one. But yeah. as a kid growing up, it was, I right. was very fortunate. It was the best. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I guess I'll share my little story. I had very low-key Christmases mm -hmm. compared to everybody, but the one that actually, I guess, propelled me into my future, I was four years old, and the local radio station came to the daycare center that was, like, not too far down the street. And they would have somebody that would come in with a microphone and ask all the little kids questions. It's like, so what do you think that Santa Claus is going to bring you for Christmas? And all I knew was what old people said. I said, a sewing machine. <laughs> I can't sew to this day, but that's what I knew about was my granny always sewed. And so then Ken Jennison, bless his soul, he's still with us. He's like, and what do you think that Santa Claus eats for Christmas? I said, macaroni and cheese. <laughs> and so now I carry that because that was the first time I was ever on the air. Yeah. And now fast forward <laughs> that, your first hello, yeah. to now I'm 49. And who knew <laughs> that that was going to be my life? And we talk about Christmas traditions now. Mm -hmm. I actually leave my tree up 365. Yeah. Do you really? I do. Oh, I you say that. That's like decorated. Decorated, yes. Because, because to me, you know, some of the prettiest times we'll ever experience are yeah. during the Christmas season. Right. right. Why do we have to let that go? Mm -hmm. And so in the master bedroom, every night it comes on at 645 and it goes off at 245 in the morning. <laughs> wow. And it's a seven and a half foot tree and oh, it's just whoa. absolutely gorgeous it's fully decorated and michael has gotten used to it now at yeah. first he's like is this like a temporary thing i'm like no but it just brings me such joy right. i can see it from the street and it just makes me feel warm and good i so, love yes. that That's i awesome. want to tag on to your story about when you guys went down to see the luminaries uh -huh. Uh -huh. we used to go and and my grandmother lived with us my dad's mom she would always something would happen well she's got to finish the dinner or maybe she had a headache or something when when dad and mom would take us all out to see the lights mm -hmm. and when we'd come home from seeing lights every year we would just miss santa i mean we just <laughs> missed it you know he came every year while we were looking at christmas lights so but you know my grandma sewed for us and and we have a little picture of my sister and i we i was we were both born in california so we were at macy's and um, in Oakland, California, and so I'm the one sitting down, and she's the one standing up. I was six, and she was eight, and we just had the best Christmases, and my grandma sewed all of our clothes, made us toys. She was fabulous, and I miss her every Christmas. Well, we've gone from twisted Christmas to great Christmases and great displays, but you know what? We're going to take a short break, but we're gonna be back in a few moments, so don't go away. It's time to decorate, and Cheryl Clark with Dare to Dream Events has not only decorated our set, but she is going to show us all how to create this fabulous runner. I mean, it could be a table runner. What else could it be, Cheryl? You can put it on your staircase. You can put it on your office desk. You can put it over your front door, your mantel. You can use it anywhere you want for the holidays. And I love it as a table runner right here. I notice you haven't done traditional red and green. No, we went with pink. Uh, a soft pink and a champagne gold um, for the ladies this year. Yes, do I something think that's different. awesome. Okay, so now this looks like a very long, you can do any length, but how do you get the length? This is actually two garlands uh, that we've secured together to make it fuller, or you can attach another garland on the end to make it longer as you need to. Lights are so important, they add so much. When do you add the lights? We add the lights first, 
and then we add the ribbon. And we've secured everything with just the garland. Um, since this is white, we didn't want to use floral wire. You can either use um, the garland itself or you can use fishing line that's clear oh, that that's it wouldn't perfect. be shown. And now could regular ribbon or this feels a little... Uh, yeah, this has wire in it. Okay. This one does. You can use regular ribbon, but the wired ribbon will stand up better and it's easier to work with. Gives you more dimension more, and that kind yep. of stuff. Okay, now we have to show another way to attach, which you think this is just something that you would hang on your tree, but what do you do with it? I just attach it to the garland over here. Just take it, wrap it around. Oh. And then just bend your garland back and it's secure. Oh, Unless you're putting it on your um, staircase, then you want to just, you can just use it that way and then you don't have to really secure it if you're just laying it on a flat surface. Okay, and as we learned at the Thanksgiving wreath, we have these gorgeous picks and yep. we always need a lot of bling, now, so. A lot of bling. <laughs> it's not bling and we don't want it. You just stick it in here. And kind of try to get it around a light so that the light does shine even more. Exactly. Oh, perfect. And you could just push your light right in here. Oh. And then this, look at this, this is gorgeous. This is my favorite, the pink poinsettia. And so when you go in here, you'll just secure it in here as well. Mm -hmm. Same process, bend it back, and then just secure it from the back. And you do your kind of flouncing then kind That's of right. overall. Flounce and it. Something unusual is this flower. This one, I love this. This is a clip. And you can put this anywhere on the reef as well. Mm. Love it. Just clip it and attach it. Oh, that is and you're perfect. Good. Look at this, and there's nothing like coming into a room and maybe it's dark, all except for the runner or however you want to use this. So I tell you what, Cheryl is decorating your home, your office, whatever you need. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me again. I tell you, the sparkle, the bling, make it yours. We are now joined by psychotherapist Valerie Peckham. Valerie has a private practice in Lawrence and also teaches as an adjunct instructor of psychology at Washburn University here in Topeka. Welcome to Inspire, Valerie. Thank you for having me. So the holidays can be a difficult time for a lot of us. Some of us have lost loved ones and sometimes it's just a difficult season to navigate in general. Mm -hmm. Do you see an uptick in the amount of patients that come to you? Sometimes, sometimes we do. The holidays are very stressful, as you are aware, and s sometimes people just want extra support during the holidays. Sometimes people want to prepare for the holidays, and sometimes we see more people come in after the holidays are over. So for people that may not um, feel like this time of year is really great for them, what are some techniques that people can use to help them cope with what's going on through the holidays or sort of get them to a place where they can, they can have less stress involved with the holidays? I think it would certainly depend on what's going on with them, but falling back on healthy self-care is always a, a good plan. So having a, maintaining a, a healthy schedule, maintaining your healthy routines, and making sure that you're not taking on too much, but you're also not avoiding engaging in the, the fun of the holidays, all of those things can be helpful. So on the flip side of that, for those, there are those that the holidays can be very stressful. There are others who the holidays is the greatest thing, they're mm -hmm. waiting for it, it's a wonderful thing, and then, January comes mm -hmm. and it's depressing and dark and cold. What, for, on the other side, what can someone do about that side, the post-holiday blues? Is there any, anything different that they should do about that? That is a whole big ball of yarn right there. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely, because it depends on what's going on with somebody in January. Is that, so I guess what I'm thinking of is sometimes we have someone who may be particularly vulnerable to some of the seasonal affective depressive type disorders, but maybe they have some momentum that carries them through the holidays and are able to kind of ignore that or that momentum propels them and buoys them up. And then here comes January and there's maybe a bit of a crash. And so depending on what's going on with somebody, they'd wanna to talk to somebody, get to the bottom of that so that we can develop an appropriate intervention for them. Mm -hmm. And then there are those folks who then decide just to get to the gym, right, in January, <laughs> where they've eaten for Thanksgiving, they've eaten for Christmas, they maybe drank too much for New Year's, and then they wanna to get to the gym. Mm -hmm. So New Year's resolutions. 
New Year's, in my opinion, <laughs> New, New Year's resolutions are kind of a, a trap for some people, mm -hmm. and we set some really big goals for ourselves that are hard to maintain, and so change is good a lot of times, but we want to make smaller incremental changes, and so it's an okay idea to go to the gym after the holidays. It's an okay idea to make uh, plans to make changes and healthy changes in our lives. We just want to make sure that those plans that we make are plans that we can sustain. And so smaller changes, incremental changes, are easier to implement and yeah. they're longer lasting. Mm -hmm. So, What about managing expectations? Say you're going to Christmas dinner mm -hmm. and you have some family, they all get along, but other members of the family <laughs> really don't. What are your suggestions? That's really tricky. Okay. <laughs> and again, it would depend on the particular situation. But that's a that's a really hard question. I have to think about that one a little bit, to be honest. Like, <laughs> so, yeah, that's a that's a really big question. Mm -hmm. So well, it, ha it seems yeah. to happen in so many families. Mm -hmm. You know, like Uncle Joe doesn't care for Aunt uh, Bertha. Louise. Bertha. Yeah. Right. There you go. There you go. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, and it it again, it, family dynamics can be so complex that it, it kind of depends on what the dynamics are. So. My first instinct is to say, try to not get in the middle between other family members. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, it depends what the roles are in the family. So I think honestly this year we're, is a continuation from last year. Mm -hmm. So this year in 2021, we still have a lot of uncertainty and there's still quite a bit of disagreement about certain things that are going on. What role does peer pressure play during the holidays? There's a lot of people who try to one-up each other. How do you deal with that and try to not make yourself a part of that drama? I think that's a great question. And I think we all need to identify what our priorities are and then adhere to our priorities and make those types of choices. So it's really easy, especially today, to want to keep up and to want to model or emulate or copy or be as good as, but we really need to identify what our personal values are, what our family values are, and then adhere to those. Well, and especially, let me come up and, and do like another question with that. Talk about peer pressure to get kids all these like expensive mm -hmm. gifts mm -hmm. right. and you only have a limited budget because I know that there are mm -hmm. a lot of parents mm -hmm. who feel the need to like make sure they have the latest gaming systems and this mm -hmm. and that and they know that maybe the rent could be not paid for mm -hmm. the next month because they were trying to be impressive to their kids. Sure, that's something that, that also has a year after year effect because mm -hmm. I think a lot of times parents wanna do better than the year before. Year before right. And so, so it just gets more and more and more expensive. And I think going into the holidays with a plan, going into the holidays with a plan for your budget, going into the holidays with a plan for healthfulness, like sticking with your gym routine, making sure that you're sticking with your sleep routine, um, all of that can be helpful with that. So you wanna have that plan and then stick with that plan. So what if these priorities that you set for yourself or this idea that you have for what your budget is, is not the vision that's shared by other people in your family? And then what you've produced for Christmas is disappointing to them or upsetting to them. How do you deal with those kinds of conflicts? You know, it, it depends on who's having the conflict. Mm -hmm. So if these are two parents that are having different ideas about their visions for Christmas, we'd wanna see those parents get on the same page. But I'll tell you one thing that we do see a lot of, or that I've encountered a lot in my work is when parents have one vision for how they want to introduce holidays to their children and like the grandparents have a different vision right. and and so we see some conflict with that and so we need to we need to have some good com direct communication mm -hmm. and try to be as assertive as possible so what about the dynamic between a parent and a child? So obviously, mm -hmm. most children get really excited um, about the holiday season, however you celebrate. Um, there's excitement involved with it. So how mm -hmm. do parents communicate what the kids should be reasonably expecting without putting a damper on the season? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess it depends on what those expectations are from those kids. So parents know their children and so parents know how to maybe introduce the idea of what to expect for the holidays and I think again communication with the kids would be probably the best bet for that. Great. So a lot of our conversation is about managing expectations mm -hmm. and managing other people's expectations. Okay well, I mean and which is which are great words. Mm -hmm. How do you implement that? 
You know, I've been thinking a lot about that <laughs> as I've been thinking about coming on the show today. And I was thinking about how we often fantasize about what we want our holidays to be like. And so we create fantasies and then we think about those fantasies and we try to play those fantasies out in our minds. And I think that as we create our fantasies and our because fantasies are, can become expectations. Mm -hmm. As we fantasize about what, what we're hoping for the, for the holidays, let's rein it in then. Let's think about what's realistic. Like what, are, what can we really do this year for holidays? And so, so is it realistic to expect that we're going to do a lot of air travel this coming mm -hmm. holiday season? Mm -hmm. Maybe not necessarily. Mm -hmm. So we wanna think about what's ap actually realistic and then match our expectations or our hopes with what can actually happen. That's helpful. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's oh, helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Valerie, thank you so much for coming on to Inspire today and happy holidays to you and to your family. And we're gonna take another short break, but we'll be back with more of our holiday special in just one moment. Hey there, Betty Lou and Amanda here at Amanda's Bakery Creations inside Fairline Plaza Mall. And the cookies have been going out of here, the gingerbread men have been going out of here, but today, what's going out of here? We're going to be making Jingle Bell Cake Balls. Somebody could just take a spoon to it right now, but <laughs> so what's the process? You are just going to crumble it up very finely now this is the part where everybody is dependent on what they like on the inside. All right. I just use my plain buttercream recipe. Oh, okay. So we're just so. going to add enough to basically make it moist and make them stick together. Okay. So you hmm. just want to add a little bit at a time. And again, mixing with your hands. Again, mixing with your hands. Kids love this part. But this is so, a lovely dessert. As you can see, this is where you want it. Wow. Until it sticks Love together. It. So you can make them any shape you'd like. And we're doing Jingle Bells today, of we're course. We're doing for Jingle Bells the holidays. for the holidays. Right. So okay, that's actually so. enough. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a scooper, or you can go with your hands, but I'm kind of OCD and I like the same size of cake balls right. all across the board. So then to do you bake them? You don't No, since no, these are already baked, baked if you want to stick the pops in them, like the little sticks in them, you could. You can and then freeze them for a little bit. But since they're just gonna be little cake balls without the sticks, we're just gonna go from here. I think that's great. Is there a way to form the jingle bell or nope. We're just gonna make them all around, roll them up a little bit into a little ball. All right. So today our color is yellow because right. it's Jingle Bells. There you go. You're going to make sure your chocolate's all nice and melted. And then you're going to take a fork. You're going to get it a little bit in the chocolate so that the cake sticks to it. This the is a chocolate, family activity. This is hot <laughs> chocolate, so yeah. please have an adult help the children with this part. Sure. Mm -hmm. You're just going to tap it a little bit, try to get some of the excess off. Now this is the part that bothers me because I need it all smooth. So I usually do a double dip. All right. That never happens around my house because they usually get eaten. Eaten as soon as they're I, frosted. As soon as they're frosted, they get eaten. Take it right off. Take it right off of there. Oh, how cute. I was like, <laughs> and actually, in order for these, to, these little candies to stick, we need them a little bit wet. So that's oh, fine. Okay, so that's good. These ones just happen to be, I just picked gold today. Right. I love it. So, you know, make it fun. Make it fun for the whole thing. It's a whole lot of fun, always. Right here in the bakery, come on inside. We are inside Fairlawn Plaza Mall. It's time for Jingle Bell Cake Ball. Welcome back. Ladies, did you notice that I brought a few of my African-American Santas with me today? I yes. love them. About 21 years ago, I had a business selling African-American collectibles and fine art because I wanted black children to be able to see things in their home that were representative of themselves and their family and their, and their heritage. So how often have you seen an African-American Mary, uh, Mary and Joseph, and a nativity scene? Yes, awesome. right? I and then that. we have 
all of these fabulous different Santas, uh, African American Santas. Um, some of them were done by a collection called Sarah's Attic and uh, the, the nativity scene is by Sarah's Attic and I have a huge collection. I didn't want to bring every single one of my 250 different Santas. Oh, wow. <laughs> Somebody wow. has a problem. Somebody has a problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I'm good with it. I know who I am. There, there are worse problems you could have. <laughs> this is true. This is true. So, you know, this is something that, you know, when we were coming up, the thought never occurred to anyone to, you know, have a black Santa. And right. when, we, when we had Mahogany Curio, we would have a black Santa come to the gallery and people could bring their children with them and they could sit on Santa's lap and they could tell Santa what they wanted and it would be an African-American Santa. I love it. And it was really a wonderful thing to do and I mean we were mobbed by folks who wanted to have their children meet a black Santa. That's perfect. So that's one of my favorite remembrances of the last, you know, did I, did I say 21 years? How yeah. embarrassing. Yeah. Am I so <laughs> dating myself? <laughs> That's okay. But yes. Amber, you have a cute seven-year-old. I do, I do, yes, Ollie. And we, um, I didn't realize that I was doing this until looking at pictures, but I have a thing for putting us in matching jammies at Christmas time. <laughs> really? Okay, then, and then I started looking at other pictures, and, and then there are like just our normal day-to-day -day photos where we are also wearing matching Christmas <laughs> outfits. I, so I guess my thing at Christmas time with my son is to force him to dress up like me. <laughs> so I'm confident oh, that one day he'll put the brakes on that, um, but I'm going to let that ride as long as I can because exactly. it's super fun. <laughs> <laughs> but that's great. I, I think it's precious, actually. It's fun mm -hmm. and you know I just want it to be a magical time for him Absolutely. and so you know I, I I just go full tilt decorate our house it's like a winter wonderland and and he loves it and his what he likes is he likes to go to sleep at night and he likes to wake up in the morning to have the house decorated he'll yes. so he'll say mm. mommy when I go tonight when I go to sleep will you do the decorations and so yeah. he, he likes to be surprised by yeah. it and I, and I love that because then I don't have to tell him that where he's hanging the ornament is stressing me out <laughs> <laughs> yes, and that's it, managing expectations. Mm -hmm. It doesn't that's have right. to be perfection. <laughs> right. it yeah. can just go. Yeah. But what about hearing the uh, hoofs on the roof and Santa? Do you, do you say, oh, I think I hear oh, some? What we were really what we focus more on is writing our letter to Santa and, and talking about you know what, what we might want. And it's really a lovely trick because for like two months leading up to Christmas, anytime we're at the store and he says, I, I want to get that, I say, put it on the list. And then we just, <laughs> and he forgets about it. So now I don't have to buy toys. Oh. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a good, it's a good technique. <laughs> yeah, that, that won't always work. No, so no. I'm just more warning you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> But we have, we have a good time, and uh, we like to read Christmas books, and we put out cookies for Santa, oh, and so it's really nice. So yeah. <laughs> and that's all the time we have for today, and we hope that every one of you has a safe and happy holiday season. And as a reminder, you can watch this program online again at watch.ktwu.org. And if you're inspired to learn more about our guests and find out what is coming up on future shows, be sure to visit our website at www.ktwu.org forward slash inspire. Inspiring women, inspiring you, inspiring holiday traditions on KTWU. We thank you for watching. Inspire is sponsored by Kansas Furniture Mart, using furniture to inspire conversation. And by the Blanche Bryden Foundation.